Okay, it's uh, 10 o'clock, it's uh, Thursday, it's uh, Think Tech, I'm Jay Fidel, and we're talking to Tom Yamachika because we talk tax with Tom. This is Talking Tax with Tom. Welcome, Tom. Welcome, Jay, thanks for having me on the show yet again. We're, we're talking about a, a recap on the uh, Tax Foundation of Hawaii, their annual meeting, uh, and I, I like to drill down a little bit on what Tax Foundation of Hawaii uh, is and does and uh, why uh, the annual meeting. Sure. Um, uh, we are a, a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and, uh, uh, and we're supported by our members. Uh, that's who uh, make up the. Uh, or that's who for whom we have the benefit of our annual meeting, and uh, oh, every year at about this time, uh, we have an annual meeting, and you know, not not a whole lot of business, just the essentials, uh, but we do have. Uh, usually a, uh, a speaker or two uh, to tell us about things in uh, public finance or government or taxes uh, that people don't uh, or probably aren't, be, aren't going to be able to get anywhere else. Uh, so this year was no exception. Uh, we had a, uh, a virtual annual meeting for the first time, uh, but we had two very special guests, uh, former governors, Waihe and Abercrombie. Uh, I, I know you're very much familiar with John. He uh, does, uh, does a show on, on your network a lot. Uh, Neil is a little harder to pin down, but we, we got him and, uh, and that show was a lot of, uh, the, uh, the, the meeting was a lot of fun yesterday. And not yesterday, but on Tuesday. Were they together or separate? Together. Oh my goodness gracious. That must have been interesting. Uh, would you say they agreed on everything? Well, of course not. <laughs> but, <laughs> and and with, they weren't they weren't physically together. You know, they, they were um, together virtually. We had them on the same Zoom screen. Uh, but it's just just like how how we're together right now. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So uh, you know, what did they tell you about? What what was the revelation, if any? <laughs> well, uh, one of the things that we tried to zoom in on uh, was what exactly is this crisis and. Uh, you know, how is, uh, how do we best get through it? And uh, we, we kind of talked about, you know, two aspects of uh, crisis response, uh, one being leadership and one being you know, the structural response. Now the structural response you really can't do much with because a lot of, the, a lot of it, uh, it takes a while to build up and, uh, and is, is, is very difficult to change. Uh, leadership, however, is something um, Kind of intrinsic to the you know, the person or people who are uh, who are, who are leading the effort, and one um, uh, uh, you know one one story actually comes to mind uh, you know which is what what uh, you know Governor Abercrombie said uh, you know Governor Abercrombie said somebody came up to him and said well hey you know your term is over uh, you know aren't you glad now that um, you know you're not leading. Uh, in, in times of this crisis, and, and he goes, "Are you crazy?" Um, you know, during uh, you know during good times, any fool can lead because because the, the state pretty much runs itself. It's it it takes something out of the ordinary, uh, like a crisis, where you can demonstrate true, true leadership. And so, you know, he said, "You know, I was never one one to to walk away from." A, you know, bad times or a crisis. Uh, neither was neither was John Wahey, neither was Ben Caetano, uh, and uh, that's I think you know very interesting uh, to hear them tell it in terms of contrast. Um, one uh, one thing uh, that 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 Governor Wahey said that that kind of came to mind is you know when I talked about uh, or we, we tried to talk about you know hey what's happening with this. Uh, uh, with this wave of cabinet defections, you know we have uh, uh, people like uh, you know, Scott Murakami from DLIR, Rona Suzuki from Department of Tax, uh, Bruce Anderson from Department of Health, Nolan from Espinda from Public Safety. You know, uh, they're they're all gone, uh, and um, you know what's 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 the matter? And uh, you know, Governor Why has said Why has said, well, you know, this is. Um, Basically, six years into an eight-year term, uh, you know, things happen. Uh, it's not unexpected for 
uh, you know, cabinet, uh, you know, cabinet directors uh, around this time in you know the six years in, out of an eight-year cycle to think, well, geez, I only got two years left. Um, you know, what am I going to do when I grow up? Right? There's uh, they they have to do something uh, when their term ends, and uh, hopefully, you know, not be unemployed and. Uh, you know, leave their families out in the lurch. Yeah, but this is a confluence of a number of them all at the same time. And uh, I might add, not to say that it's directly related, but Ikaika Anderson, city council chair, just resigned. Also, that's the city, not the state, but it, it strikes me that this has got to have something to do with COVID. It's got to have something to do with, um, you know, the trouble both the city and state are having politically over the moves that our leaders have made over COVID. Uh, I, that's the elephant in the room, Tom, don't you think so? Yeah, and then I guess the uh, the issue then becomes, uh, you know, when we look back at, uh, you know, what Governor Abercrombie said, you know, who, who's gonna step up? Who's going to, uh, you know, actually come up and, 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 and lead us? And, and leadership sometimes means, uh, you know, motivating people to do things they don't wanna do. Because if I mean, you don't need a leader to, to, to make people do things they want to do, right? So, um, you know, uh, to be to be passionate, to be inspiring, uh, is you know something uh, that's uh, that that's what a leader exhibits, and you know, we, we I think we kind of need more of that these days. Well, did either of them? Uh... A, a judge, uh, the leadership of uh, David Ike, I mean, either on or off the record? Oh, well, not directly. Um, uh, I mean, Neil kind of, uh, you know, talked about, uh, you know, having a conversation with Bruce Anderson early on saying, you know, we, we really need to do a contact tracing. We need to do, you know, all of these things that, uh, that, that CDC is recommending for us. And, and, you know, we need to ramp up, uh, you know, the money's not an object. Uh, because you have these funds coming in from the uh, from Uncle Sam uh, to pay for this, but we got to ramp up. We ha we have to, you know, uh, get the human part and and the, and the, and the structural part uh, down immediately. But you know that never happened. Why I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it may be you know part of you know the inertia of the state organization, which is a big organization, uh, or it may be something else. But that I think is one of the things that, that, that uh, John Y. Hay was referring to when he said, you know, part of the, uh, you know, part of the crisis response is structural. Yeah, well, you know, I, I mean, without naming names, there are a lot of people out there have tried to give advice uh, to the leaders of the Department of Health and have been rejected. Their advice has been bound, bounced off and they haven't had any effect. And they're walking around pretty upset about that. Because if their advice had been taken, it would be we'd be in a different spot. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, I, I and, and you, it like is. you said, it's, it's a, yeah, yeah, twenty twenty hindsight. <laughs> yeah. It's very easy to say, oh, uh, you, you know, you could have, would have, should have, but but didn't. Yeah. Uh, although I think there, it's beyond dispute that um, th there are some things that you know uh, the world organizations that the national organization were recommending that we didn't do. Yeah, a lot of advice wasn't taken. Yeah, and, and now, well, you know, actually, I, I don't know what it is, I, I, and I don't know whether your meeting covered it, but uh, the numbers, for reasons that I, I don't understand, are reason the the numbers seem to be declining a little bit. Uh, you know, from three hundred now it's down to one hundred. I don't know why. Uh, could it be the message is getting through on on masks and social distancing? Could it be that the testing is the testing is not happening? Because you know, taking an inverse on Donald Trump, if you test, you'll find more cases. If you don't test, you'll find less cases. It's a great way to control the public message, to control the amount of testing you do. So if, if the number of cases we have is declining, was there any discussion about why? Well, uh, well, no, I mean, we, we, we kind of mentioned that we were in lockdown mode again. Uh, uh, we, we kind of tried to dive a little bit deeper into, you know, what leadership entails uh, and, um, you know, 
one of the things is that you, you cannot have corruption. Okay, um, and nobody says that there that there is any. Uh, you also need to have openness and uh, and communication, you know, with with the public, uh, so you know what's happening, uh, why they're being asked to do, uh, what they're being asked to do, and so they can buy into it. Uh, here, uh, it, you know, it's it's beyond cavil that the the the, the first response uh, that our government did to the pandemic was to shut off communication. Right, all, all open meeting laws are suspended. All uh, uh, Uniform Information Practices Act is suspended. Uh, you know, don't talk to us; we'll talk to you. Isn't isn't that what a what a, a, a crisis manager would say? Professional crisis communications manager. Let's get the message straight. Otherwise, uh, you know, we'll have multiple messages and great confusion and criticism. Well, but you also you also need the public to buy in. Uh, people don't like being, you know, said, you know, uh, uh, or told, you know, do this and shut and shut up. Mm. I, mean, I, I certainly like don't like being, you know, uh, being talked to in that way. Uh, yeah. And I and I think it's a you know very commonly held feeling. You know, you need to, you know, be open. You need to be honest. You need to uh, tell people what's going on. You know, this is this is why we want to do what we want to do, and can you help us out? You know. Uh, May I add, it's also, it's also a question of context. What I mean is if a given leader um, in the past, before the crisis, uh, did not engender trust, he did not work to build it, he did not achieve it, people did not trust him, and then the crisis takes place, it's very hard to do you know, what people would compliment you for. Uh, they're going to look for distrust. They're going to look for mistakes. And so you have to work on that trust element all the time, not just in crisis. Yeah, no, we, we, we definitely uh, went into that. Uh, it's, a, it's a key element of leadership. Um, you, know, you, you can't have leadership without trust. Yeah. Well, that's a good, that's a good uh, discussion. Yeah, I mean, as, as I mentioned before, uh, leadership is getting people motivated to do things they otherwise wouldn't want to do. If they don't trust you, why would they do it? Right. And, and in, in crisis, and we're going to have more crisis going forward, um, whatever reason, whether it's the weather, whether it's a pandemic, whether it's uh, things that emanate out of Washington that are completely irrational, and, but we're still subject to it, uh, we're going to need to have a better relationship, a better trust relationship with our local leaders. Uh, it, clearly, it's not time for complacency now. It's time for them to engender trust, and it's time for us to examine, um, you know, our trust relationship and be trusting of them. Right now, what, one of the um, uh, solutions or possible paths to a, a solution that was that was brought forth, and uh, Governor Abercrombie brought this up, was, you know, should should we be, you know, looking at more private, public private partnerships? Um, uh, there are a, a number of them being proposed. Uh, Oliver Stadium is one of them, uh, and they can s perhaps come up with some solutions that, you know, that the state government in its current structural uh, structural state can't. Uh, one of the reasons I think is uh, that uh, there there is a lot of uh, structural obsolescence in uh, in the infrastructure that we have in our state. We, we, we talk about the Department of Health, uh, you know, doing their entire contract tracing operation uh, with two fax machines. Uh, you know, what, what what's going on with that? I mean, why why don't we have you know email or apps or you know some of the more modern tools? Uh, and I think the answer is they don't have them. So that means that between say February and now, their tracing effort, to whatever extent they actually did it which I believe was like near zero. Um, they were doing it on a fax machine. Myself, Tom, I haven't actually handled or used a fax machine at either the send or receive end of it, you know, in, in 15 or 20 years. So I find it remarkable that the state in a crisis 
uh, when they need to communicate critically, they don't have a way to do it, except fax machines. That's well, a, I, like I, think, lose. I think I think fax machines are, are used primarily because um, there's been you know s some security issues with email, uh, which is I guess another very common way to communicate. Um, those issues are not present with faxing, uh, but um, uh, you know, having a physical machine do it. I mean, I think that's that's uh, uh, you know really really uh, in the dark ages these days. Uh, uh, you can have an electronic or, or a computer, uh, you know, listen to an incoming fax, and it, it can, you know, basically receives the file and then, uh, you know, put it in a place where you can where you can grab it securely. So why yeah, not do that? That's an interesting question to discuss. Uh, that is the fax machine issue with uh, Neil Abercrombie, because one of his big things, which sadly enough, uh, he, he did not really achieve. He, uh, he had a public-private partnership with um, it was Pierre Omidyar, and um, it was uh, um, somebody else, another wealthy fellow. And they, and they wound up hiring Sonny Bagualia out of GSA in Washington, bring him out here to evaluate, you know, the, 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 the computer systems in the state. And it, it took him a couple of years and a lot of money. And he then reported that the computer systems in the state were way behind. Unfortunately, it was never fixed. Um, <clears throat> uh, Neil Abercrombie wanted to fix it in the worst way. And he was concerned about things like finding a shop that was using faxes or old computers. And he must have been right on this issue in that discussion, because it's one of his pet peeves. Am I right? Yeah, no, he he certainly was. He was he was talking about that a lot. That that one of the you know, the priorities in his administration was to you know address the structural uh, the structural deficit by you know at least uh, improving the technology infrastructure. Yeah. Well, that must be interesting. Media. How many members of your board? How many are there? And what kind of people are they? Are they nice? Are they come from the business community? Where are they from? Our board, um, our, our 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 board is uh, you know drawn from all walks of life. Uh, you know there there are business leaders, there are nonprofits. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, former Lieutenant Governor Iona. Uh, we have uh, uh, some other uh, nonprofit heads. We have, we have Dennis Brown. Big brothers, big sisters. Uh, we have, uh, you know, various uh, various companies um, being represented. We have uh, accounting firms, law firms, uh, those with you know interest in taxes. So uh, you know, we you you make um, examination analysis of, of various um, you know tax issues and fiscal policy issues. We we talk about them and. You go down and you talk to the legislators about it, and, and maybe the executive too sometimes, and um, try to uh, you know advocate for one position or another. Good common sense legislation. Um, does your board get involved in that? Do you do you tell them in advance about what positions you're taking? Do they tell you in advance what positions they'd like you to take? Do you share between annual meetings, or is it just a report at the annual meeting? I, I do report at the annual meeting. Uh, what, what happens is the, the board has approved a, a, a set of principles uh, that would uh, guide our positioning. Uh, that's it's on our website. And, um, the the commentary uh, on legislation, our testimony, uh, is is drafted with that in mind. We uh, we typically don't have time during during the session to uh, to reach out to the board on individual positions, you know, uh, a, a bill comes up for hearing, you get notice of it, uh, you know, two days before, testimony is due one day before, so it's not a whole lot of time. Uh, in contrast, our, our, our weekly commentary, which, you know, goes out to the media uh, every week, it, it, it is reviewed by a board. So, they, do they take positions on it and say, hey, Tom, you know, we don't agree with this, or you shouldn't say this, or... Uh, Sometimes. Looking at the other side of it. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. 
So, yeah. so, so, um, uh, it's I think a good check and balance on on uh, uh, on, on my otherwise unbridled passion, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the way it should work. You know, you, you, right. want them, you want them to weigh in. This is an interesting question. You want them to weigh in. You want them to express themselves and how they, and how they see the mission, you know, in the detail or right? sort of um, kind of interpretation of the mission. At the same time, there's got to be a chief executive who runs with it. I am reminded. In fact, I wanted to tell you this story. Okay. <clears throat> in the 18th century, if I were a sea captain, before I left the port, the Admiralty would have a, a, a sealed envelope delivered to me with a, with a wax seal on the outside. And when I got out to sea, I would, I would undo the seal and I would look at my orders. My orders were in the envelope. Then the orders would tell me where I should go and what I should do in very, very general terms. No detail at all. And I, as a ship captain, was responsible. And of course, you know, under the rules of admiralty, if I didn't like what a sailor was doing, I could have him hung from the yard arm um, or keel hauled, whatever the case may be. I was walk in the plank, a, yeah. <laughs> walk the plank. I was in complete control as the captain of that ship. It meant a lot to be a captain of that ship. I also had to avoid mutiny, by the way. <laughs> so yeah. I, I could only go so far. Um, now, today, you know, when the captain leaves, you know, the port uh, with his with his warship and so forth, uh, he's in constant contact by radio and, and other methodologies uh, with the Admiralty. They tell him what to do. They want to know what he's doing every day. They know where he is, how he, you know, how well supplied he is, where he's going, and every single thing. And he doesn't have the same kind of authority because they're going to, obviously, they're going to tell him what to do. And so there's a, there's a whole ship, the whole thing about how leadership has changed at sea. And I suggest that leadership has changed in, in, in every way when you have a board to which you are responsible, uh, where they do express themselves, uh, but they leave a certain amount of discretion to you. So the question is, how much discretion do you have uh, and how much control do they have? And you have to find a balance. I mean, in, in every case for every board and every leader you have to find a case. In the case of David E. Gay and um, you know COVID, um, you know he's he's kind of a lame duck, so it's 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 you know the legislature could tell him a few things, but the public is not going to be able to tell him, except through the press, uh, very much at all. So it's that accountability issue, isn't it? Yeah, and and the um, uh, and the legislature is uh, actually being more uh, activist uh, right now. They're they're kind of jumping into things. They're you know, walking into the Department of Health and, you know, uh, turning turning over rocks to find contact tracers, yeah. as we've as we've uh, discussed in this show before. Yeah. Uh, so, but your leadership now, your leadership, you, you you pretty much have the discretion within the boundaries of uh, the policies you've established with them um, to to go from year to year. They're not likely to uh, you know contact you by radio and tell you, wait a minute. You know, don't hang that man from the yard arm. Uh, you get to do what you get to do, right? Right, uh, except when it comes to uh, uh, being an aircraft carrier and reporting that, uh, that, that your ship is infested with COVID. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> yeah, that, that could be a career ending move, right? So this was a, the first time, and I fully understand this because we're having the same experience, um, that a board of directors meeting uh, for the Tax Foundation of Hawaii was um, organized by Zoom. And uh, I, I assume they all showed up. I assume they all had valuable input. But tell me, how did it go? And what was the difference in, you know, in the gestalt? Oh, no, this is, this is a, an annual meeting. It's a, it's a members meeting. We have about 250 members okay. uh, coming from all walks of life. Okay. Uh, you know, some small business people, some, some big corporations, uh, retired people, everything in between. And, and that's, you know, their uh, chance to come and, and see what the foundation's done. Uh, and and you know, we, you know, I, I do report on what we've done and how many, like how many hits on our website and so forth. Um, we get, we get uh, 70, 80,000 hits a month, which, which I think is not bad. 
oh, that's pretty good. Now you're, you're a popular fellow. So the, the members meeting is not the same as the board meeting. Does the board meet, meet more than once once a year? Yeah, yeah, the board, board meets uh, uh, every month during session and, uh, and every other month when we're out of session. And does, does the, uh, the member group elect new directors uh, every year? Uh, no, that's done by the board. Okay, all right. Okay, well, that's common for a 501c3 anyway. So how is this meeting on, co on, um, on Zoom different from earlier meetings that you've had over the years? Um, well, you know, when we had uh, meetings at the, at the Plaza Club, for example, we, uh, you know, in the past few years, we were able to fill up the place. You know, 150 people showed up. Uh, I, I guess, you know, some, some voluntary, some not, because, you know, a company bought a table, so we, you know, we need to get bodies in there and so forth. Uh, on, this, on this virtual meeting, we had, uh, you know, 60-something people, but, you know, they were all uh, engaged. Um, uh, there, there may be more. Uh, we may have had people uh, in a conference room dialing in, and they would show up as one person on our screen. Uh, so we, we don't know exactly how many people were in attendance, but uh, uh, it seemed to be a, a little bit lower than usual. Uh, but I think again, it's it's because of the uh, uh, the situation in which we're in. Did you uh, did you allow them to speak? Did, could they raise their hand? And uh, uh, could you did you include them in the conversation either by video or audio or both? Uh, well, we had them. Um, you know, we had everybody who was on meeting who could could submit questions through the chat box, uh, and uh, and we worked those in. I, mean, I was moderating the discussion, and uh, I made sure that the uh, uh, the questions in the chat box got asked. I got asked. Well, um, last question, Tom, because we're almost out of time. But uh, you know, so given all of that, and given the fact that um, you know that uh, that was a, a meeting in which uh, 50, 60, 70 people were engaged, uh, and given the fact that the legislature is scheduled to is meeting now, you know, informally the way they they have followed things, um, and uh, we'll start meeting formally again in January, uh, how, how have your marching orders changed? Uh, what, what kind of new instructions or new, you know, new advice have they given you that you carry forward into the next, the next year? Well, um, I, didn't, I didn't really get any. I mean, what, what we're doing is the same as we've always been doing. We've, we, we monitor legislation, uh, we provide comments, um, we, uh, you know, start reaching out to the public or to media, uh, you know, with what we find. Uh, if we find unusual things, uh, we go on like, like talking tax or, uh, or other media outlets and say, you know, hey, we have a problem, here's what it is. Uh, we might not necessarily be able to do anything about it, but, but the, you know, the voting public can. You know, they, they have measures available for them, especially, uh, you know, what's coming up in two months, right? Yeah. Well, suppose I'm watching this show and I, I really am fascinated with the whole idea of having a tax foundation in Hawaii. I think it's an important part of, of um, you know, the, the gadfly and the, the, and the government watcher and, um, and you know, supervision. Um, so the question is, how, how could I get to be a member? What do I have to do to be a member of the tax foundation of Hawaii? For that matter, what do I have to do to become a director of the tax foundation? Tell me now, so I can um, you know follow through if I want. Sure, if you want to be a, if you want to be a tax foundation member, go to our website, and there's plenty of direction on how to do that. There's like a donate button in the upper right hand corner. Um, you can kind of start there. Uh, we have membership options of, of all kinds. Uh, if you want to be a director, call me. Uh, you know, we're, we're always looking for good people. Okay, and your number is on the website too. Right, our our contact information. Is Thank you very much, Tom. Tom Yamachika, the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. It's great to learn about your organization and the way it works. Uh, we'll see you next time, Tom. Thank you, Jay. Aloha, stay safe.